Greetings, my brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Disciple Talk Bible Study. You know, this is a teaching ministry outreach of the Congregational Church in which we are praying and asking the Holy Spirit to take the truth of the Word of God as we seek to teach the Word of God. But only by the Holy Spirit can the Word of God be revealed for its truth and illuminated for our understanding. So we pray that Disciple Talk's purpose, which is to bring the conversation to the Bible, let the Bible speak for itself, and let the truth of the Bible be revealed and illuminated by the Holy Spirit for one reason, so that you and I in our personal lives can follow Jesus Christ more effectively. And in our churches as congregations to follow Jesus more effectively and to be able to serve him, to worship him, to glorify him, and to reach out to a dying world with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that emanates from a witness that we have empowered by the Holy Spirit. So my brothers and sisters, welcome back to Disciple Talk. And we're in the second part today of a teaching entitled, Discerning God's Will. Figuring out what God wants me to do. Think about it. Discerning God's will, figuring out what God wants me to do. In part one, we dealt with the issue of discernment. We dealt with the issue of, of how important it is in this hour the church is passing through and for our individual life that we know that we're following God's will. Because there's a lot of deception in this world and sadly to say in the church. Well, people's motives and and, and underhanded attacks against the work of God in the church is very prevalent today. And Christians individually and as local churches must discern what God is wanting us to do. And I said last week, if you want to know what God wants you to do, you'll find it in the word of God. Our discernment increases as we grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. As Jesus said in John 8, 31, if you remain, abide in my word, if you keep growing in knowledge of my word, you will know the truth and the truth will keep setting you free. When we don't discern God's will in our personal lives and our church life, we could be thinking we're doing God's will but being led back to bondage being led back into things that will enslave us from following Jesus. And this is why knowing the will of God is so important in our lives today and in our churches. We must know that we're following the will of God, figuring out what God wants me to do. And I talked about that at length in part one. We played part one two weeks in a row. I pray that you will review that because this is a critical teaching at this hour in the church, for pastors, for leaders, for, for anyone who is a follower of Christ. Are you discerning God's will today? Are you following God's will? Are you sure it's God's will? Are you confirmed it's God's will? Well, this teacher will continue to help us to make sure we're discerning God's will and figuring out what he wants us to do. You know, as pastor of Congregational Church, when I came here some years ago, one of the things I knew was important in a church in transition, a transition as we are, is knowing the will of God. And so I gave the church biblical principles to guide them in making a decision. Biblical principles to guide us in making our decisions. And I want to say this to Congregational Church especially, that this guide to making decisions is something I hope you're still using, but I want to read them to us and those on Disciple Talk today about making a decision. The first thing, the first biblical principle is, will this decision bring glory, honor, and praise to Jesus Christ? Will this decision I'm about to make bring glory, honor, and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will it in the end glorify him? Can you praise him about the decision you're about to make? And will it glorify him? Number two, the biblical principle is, will this decision 
lead to faithful obedience to the word of God. If I follow this decision, will it be in accordance with me obeying the word of God? If I make this decision, will it be in, a, in accordance with me obeying what God has written in his word? Number three, will this decision lead to the fulfilling of the great commandment? What is the great commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he said. What is it? Love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, strength, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Will this decision lead to fulfilling the great commandment? By this, all will know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The fourth biblical principle that we gave to the church is, will this decision comply with fulfilling the Great Commission? Because you know as your pastor and as a leader in the church to those on Disciple Talk, the Great Commission is the marching orders for the church in my estimation. Meaning, go into all the world and make disciples. Why? Because all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. So when I make a decision for myself, for my life, for my family, for my church, does it tie back to fulfilling the great commission of making disciples, helping people to be taught and obey the commands of God and grow as his disciple? The next biblical principle is, will this decision promote the gospel of the kingdom? Meaning, if I make this decision, will it promote the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection being proclaimed through my life? through the circumstances I'm making decisions on, or the church I'm a part of. Will this decision promote the gospel of the kingdom? Will it promote what Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. The next principle is, will this decision bring spiritual and physical edification to others. If I make this decision in my personal life or in my church life, will the decision I make help others be edified spiritually and physically? Will it cause them harm or will it cause them good? Will it enhance the church or will it tear up the church? Will it help somebody or will it hinder somebody on a spiritual and physical plane? Will this decision I'm about to make bring spiritual and physical edification or building up of others that it will impact? And the last principle I gave to the church, will this decision lead to the best use of FCC's financial resources? Now, that's a local thing, meaning everything we do is tied back to the resources that God gives us. Will this decision be the best use of the resources God has given me physically, financially, materialistically. Will this decision have financial, material benefits, or will it cause a detriment to these areas of the resources, the financial resources, the material resources that God has given me and given to his church? So I wanted to review these biblical principles and, and if you need these principles, we're willing to get them to you if you've lost your copy. But my brother and sister, you better make sure you're making decisions based on the word of God, not following the crowd, not following selfish ambition, not following disguised agendas in the church. Make sure you're making decisions to help you follow the will of God. So last week, we talked about what are the resources to discern God's will. What resources have God given, has God given us to discern his will? Last week, we dealt with two. I just want to review them. And then today, I want to look at some other resources and share with you on what helps us discern God's will. Okay? So let, let's deal with this because I'm coming from the Bible. And the first one we review from last week is, if you want to discern God's will, he gives you the Holy Bible as your primary resource. Meaning this, 
I made it a big point last week to say, when people tell you God told them something or God's telling them something to tell you to help you discern God's will, the true source and foundation to validate and, 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 and show that that whatever they said is biblically, is, is true, is biblically based, is it biblically based in the Bible? Can you find a verse or principle taught in the word of God that supports what this person say God's telling me to tell you to do? My brothers and sisters, it's too many spirits out there today for you not to test all the spirits by biblical truth. And that's what we said last week. The first thing he gives us is God's word, but God's word accurately interpreted. Not only just God's word, but it must be accurately interpreted. Because remember when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. Guess what? The devil was using the word of God. The devil was quoting scripture, saying that God said this and said that. But he was misinterpreting what God had said to try to lead the Lord astray, which he could not do. This is the same tactic he uses today in the church. People are be using the Bible, and this way it gets deceptive, but wrongly interpreted. Got the wrong application to what they're saying. And that's why you've got to listen to people who know the Bible and have been students of the Bible. You know, you wouldn't go to a doctor to have surgery who never had no training with you. Would you go to a doctor to get uh, uh, surgery done uh, on some part of your body and you ask them, uh, well, have you had any training and education about what you're going to do to me? He said, no, I ain't been nowhere. I ain't been to no school. I ain't had no training. I'm just going to cut you and try to find the answer. I doubt if you're going to go to that doctor. But in the church, how many Christians listen to people who know the Bible verse but don't know what the proper interpretation of it? My brother said, this is how detail you need to be when discerning God's will. Don't go to somebody who don't know how to properly interpret the Bible, God's word, to find out the will of God. That's why you need to listen to your pastor. Do you listen to somebody who has taken the time to be trained and not just get up here and hoop, holler, and run around and give you a dog and pony show, but somebody who will explain the scriptures to you, accurately interpret it, because they've been somewhere to help them be a better teacher of the word of God. And if the Bible is not a part of what somebody's telling you to do, you know that's not God's will. People following folk in the church to do something, they ain't even got a Bible verse to stand on. Better hear what I'm telling you, because that's what's going on. Number two, God's resource from last week is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes back, he will teach you, guide you, and lead you in all the truth. He also said the Holy Spirit will glorify me, and he will bring things to your remembrance, whatever I've said. So the two resources we talked about last week in helping us discern God's will is one, the Bible, the word of God itself. Know your Bible. Read your Bible. Take your personal Bible study seriously. Get you a study Bible. Get you a dictionary. Get you something so that it can help you understand what you're reading and rely on your pastoral and leaders in the church who know their Bible. Everybody in leadership don't know the Bible, understand it, and accurately interpret it. So make sure you are personally studying the Bible and taking advantage of the, the, the gifts in the church that God has placed to help you learn and teach the Bible from qualified, trained people. Number two, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's going, this, this is how you know the Holy Spirit is in something. Jesus is going to be the center of this conversation. Jesus is the one that's going to be glorified. Jesus is the one that's going to be exalted in that understanding of discerning God's will. Not, not some church issue, not some person, not some pastor, not some issue in the church, but when you know the Holy Spirit is discerning God's will for you, it will always lead to Christ being exalted and magnified. He will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you into all truth. And he will glorify Christ. These are some resources we learned last week that help us discern God's will. The word of God 
and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Today I want to go to a little more practical resources that we also must be aware of as we discern God's will. And the first one is this. You must take advantage of godly counsel. Godly counsel. I mean, go to somebody who is godly. Go to somebody who has a proven track record in their living. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Proverbs 15, 22, to seek input and advice from spiritually wise people and experienced mentors. See, you got to be able to recognize who is a spiritually wise person I can talk to? Somebody who has spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding, a greater spiritual maturity. Now, you're not going to ever find anybody who is sinless or perfected or totally matured, but you should find somebody whose life testifies to being a spiritually wise, mature person. Because the danger of not seeking out God's uh, godly counsel, can, people can go to people who may be friends and have friendships for years in the church or in the community, but they're not a person who has spiritual wisdom or spiritual knowledge. And sometimes because the, the relational, human relationship has been so important, you can go to a person out of friendship and still be led astray. That's why the Bible say, go to godly counselors. And it also is a danger when you don't go to godly counsel because we tend to gravitate toward those who will tell us what we want to hear. Meaning, you ain't, see, you ain't gonna get God's will by trying to just find somebody or tell you what you want to hear to do what you want to do. And it's easy to get a group of people together Start a conspiracy or something in the church because this is what you want, but it's not what God wants. So be aware of that. Another resource in discerning God's will other than godly counsel is sovereign circumstances. Sovereign circumstances. Uh, it says in Proverbs 16.33 from the New Living Translation, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. We may throw the dice, trying to achieve something, but God determines how they fall. And in Romans 8, 28, which is a famous text of scripture that everybody should know, Romans 8, 28, I just want to read it so I don't misread it. Romans 8, 28 says this about this issue of the sovereignty of God. You know, as prophet said, you may throw the dice, but God going to determine how they fall. And in Proverbs, I mean, Romans 8, 28, it says it this way. And we know, meaning we who know the Lord, know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So we know that everything's working to the good. Get this, how? To those working together for good to people who love God, meaning you love him. Number two, who are called according to his purpose. See, knowing the will of God is recognizing what sovereign circumstances reveal. God is sovereign, church. This is what that means. He's in full command, full control, and nothing's going to stop his plan. He is sovereign. He is a sovereign God, a sovereign Lord. And this is why when people are trying to use the church to accomplish their agenda instead of God's agenda, it won't work because you can't thwart his sovereign plan. The best thing to do is get in line with it before judgment drop on you because it's a scary thing to be fighting God's sovereign will in the church because you got some personal or selfish ambition. So sovereign circumstances, as it says, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. And observing life events and prayerfully considering how God might be leading you through providential acts. Things are happen in a church, in your life, good and bad. Just look at Joseph. He had some very tough circumstances. 
But because God was sovereign, even through the way his brothers threw him into a ditch, even though he was sold into slavery, even though he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and put in prison, even though he was forgotten in prison, all of those circumstances, though they were bad in the natural, worked for the good at the end. Because at the end, all of those circumstances led to him becoming Pharaoh's right-hand man over Egypt. And when a famine hit, his brothers, who threw him in the pit way back years ago, come to Egypt. Joseph is in the second command of Egypt, is able to save his family from starvation and preserve God's plan for the nation of Israel. And when his brothers came and recognized who he was, Joseph said this to them. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. That shows you the sovereignty of God. Even when people are trying to slander you, destroy your character, saying all false accusations, doing all this foolishness in the church, they mean evil, but God can use it for good. I hope you hear me. Sovereign circumstances are a way we discern God's will. The next one is called holy contentment. Holy contentment. And this comes from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, in the New Living Translation, which says, Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. You know, Jesus said, the peace I give you is not like the world peace. World peace is uh, no war, uh, no bad things going on. God's peace is an internal sense of tranquility between you and the sovereign God of the Bible, through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Meaning this, before I became a Christian, my nature was an enemy of God. It was hostile to God's ways. But now that I've been uh, born again, I'm now at peace with God because my nature now is now transformed by his righteousness. And we're at peace. I want to obey God now instead of fight what his will is. I want to obey him. So when you're following God's will, there is a holy contentment of peace. You know, James said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God in James chapter 1, and he will give it to you. And then he says, the wisdom of God, you know God's wisdom because it's peaceable and easily entreated without hypocrisy. You see, so to know God's will in something, you'll have peace about the decision you'll make. You won't be all arguing and fussing and fighting and trying to denigrate somebody else to get what you want done. You'll have peace about it. I like to use this illustration. It's like a hot knife through butter. I mean, it, nothing goes quicker through butter than a hot knife. There ain't no struggle. There ain't no resistance. There ain't no anything that's stopping the knife from going through. This is where you know God's will because you'll have peace about it. It'll be without hypocrisy. You won't have to try to tear down somebody's character to get done what you want done. It'll be peaceable without hypocrisy. The, the next one that I want to share with you that is a resource for discerning God's will is what is called divine compulsions. Divine compulsions, meaning sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt you we call it being led by the Spirit, but there's a divine compulsion. The Holy Spirit will prompt you, will alert you, will sensitize you to following God's will, called divine compulsions. Listen, Acts 20, 22 from the, New Liv from the Word of God says, Now compelled by the Spirit, Paul said, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Meaning, at, when he met with the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20, he said, the Holy Spirit is leading me to go to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Think about that, not knowing what will happen to me there. And it plainly says in Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. You are following God's will when you follow divine compulsions or the promptings of the Holy Spirit. 
noticing inner promptings, when you notice, check on your spirit, is, is, our, is my attitude right about this prompting? Will it lead to me obeying God and following him and doing what's right? The Holy Spirit will prompt you at times to do things. You'll know it's him because it'll bring glory to God. It'll be biblically based and you'll follow it because it won't be something that makes you do something. The Holy Spirit only inspires you to do something. See, there's a difference between demonic promptings and the Holy Spirit's prompting. The Holy Spirit never violates your will in prompting you to do something. He'll always leave the decision up to you. But demonic promptings of the devil are things that drive you. As you know in the Bible, it says he, Judas, the betrayer, was driven to do what he did. And when you think about that, that reveals that he is not being led by the Spirit. See, de demons drive you. The Holy Spirit inspires you and prompts you, but the Holy Spirit never violates your will in prompting you to obey God. One last thing about divine compulsions. Not every internal urge is from God, though. As we said, some can be from the enemy. And any whim or notion needs to be prayerfully and carefully analyzed in light of God's word. This is a part of the discernment that we need to be doing in regard to divine prompt. Because like I said last week, a lot of people talk about something dropped in me. Something dropped in my spirit. Well, I ain't concerned about what dropped in your spirit. I'm concerned about if you're, what, what you're telling me come from this book. Because anything can drop in your spirit. And last week I warned you, as 1 John 4 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God or not. And the last resource for discerning the will of God is this. Just have some good common sense. Just, just use some good common sense. Proverbs 16.22 puts it this way. Good sense, and this is the English Standard Version translation, Proverbs 16.22. Good sense is a fountain of life to him or her who has it, but the instructions of fools is folly. Listen. Again, Proverbs 16, 22 from the English Standard Version. Good sense or common sense is a fountain of life to him who has it. But the instruction of fools is folly. My brothers and sisters, as we seek to discern God's will and figure out what we want him to do, just use some good common sense. Common sense. Because God gave you a mind, you can reason things. And, and sometimes it's just a matter of good common sense. So other resources that help us discern God's will, seek out godly counsel. Be sensitive to some sovereign circumstances. Sense, you will sense a holy contentment of peace. Follow divine compulsions or inner, uh, nudgings from the Holy Spirit. And just use some common sense. You can know when somebody's heart ain't right. You ain't got to be so super spiritual you can't figure that out. Use common sense. My brother and sister, this is your pastor. And to those who listen, Pastor Smith, discern God's will. Figure out what he wants him to do, you to do. And keep following Jesus Christ. God bless you. We'll see you next week on the next Disciple Talk Bible Study.